Few scientists can agree on the exact reasons why humans have hair on their heads, but recent evidence suggests that having curly 4C hair may have been advantageous for our hominid ancestors during the course of evolution. So, why was curly 4C type hair an evolutionary advantage? Stay tuned here on The Matter of Facts. Hey guys, before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. Andre Walker, hello, good morning. Good morning. Now, we don't have just any hairstylist, folks. <laughs> this was Oprah's hairstylist. Hello. Yeah. You are the hairstylist. For yes. 30 years, good. That's you amazing. Yeah. No, there's so many different hair types. There's so many different kinds of women from different walks of life. And you have created a system where you can kind of classify it, identify what's yours, and know how to manage it. Right, and that's, I created the hair typing system so it'd be easy to identify your hair. Type four, which is kinky texture, okay. which is a very tight, coily, uh, kinky, uh, highly textured hair. New research involving the examination of a bee-wigged mannequin in a climate-controlled wind tunnel suggests that having curls on your head may have originally provided an evolutionary benefit. According to Nina Dablonski, University Professor of Anthropology at Penn State, humans evolved in equatorial Africa where the sun is overhead for much of the day, year in, and year out. So as early as humans evolved to walk upright in equatorial Africa, the tops of their heads increasingly took the brunt of solar radiation. And the brain generates heat and is sensitive to heat, especially the larger it grows. However, too much heat can lead to dangerous conditions like heat stroke. So what about body hair and sweat? Humans lost much of their body hair and developed efficient sweat glands to keep cool, but sweating comes at a cost and lost water and electrolytes. Scalp hair likely evolved to reduce the amount of heat gained from solar radiation, thereby keeping humans cool without the body having to expend extra resources. So around 2 million years ago, we see Homo erectus, which had the same physical build as Homo sapiens, but a smaller brain size. And by 1 million years ago, we basically had modern day brain size, give or take. But something released a physical constraint that allowed our brains to grow. Andy is a mannequin. He lives on the ASU Tempe campus. He's designed to really teach researchers how our extreme climate can impact people who have to be outside. Maybe they don't have any other options. They work outside when our temps crawl up into the triple digits. Now, Andy has dozens of heat sensors. He also actually sweats. We'll give you a look, closer look at some of his pores and you can actually see that sweat dripping off of. The latest research on hair and texture provides important preliminary results to better understand how human hair evolved without putting humans in potential dangerous situations. The study shows that evolutionary anthropologists have an extra tool in their thermal mannequins, normally used for testing the functionality of protective clothing for quantifying human data that is otherwise very difficult to capture. The thermal mannequin is a human-shaped model that uses electricity to simulate body heat, allowing scientists to study the heat transfer between human skin and their environment. Human hair wigs are used to examine how diverse hair textures affect heat gain from solar radiation. Scientists program the mannequin to maintain a constant surface temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius, similar to the average surface temperature of the skin and set it in a climate controlled wind tunnel. The team then took base measurements of body heat lost by monitoring the amount of electricity required by the mannequin to maintain a constant temperature. Then they shine lamps on a mannequin's head to mimic solar radiation under four scalp hair conditions. No hair, straight, moderately curled, and tightly 4C curled. According to George Havenith, Director of Environmental Ergonomics Research Center at Loughborough University, UK, who led the mannequin experiment, the scientists calculated the differences in total heat loss between the lamp measurements and the base measurements to determine the influx of solar radiation to the head. They also calculated heat loss at different wind speeds and after wetting the scalp to simulate sweating. Then they ran the results through a model to study how the diverse hair textures would affect heat gain at 86 degree Fahrenheit heat and 60% relatively humidity like environments in equatorial Africa. Researchers found and reported their findings in the June 2023 issue of Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences that all hair reduced solar radiation to the scalp but having 4C curly hair is beneficial since it shields the scalp from ultraviolet radiation, doesn't flatten out when wet, and minimize the need for sweat to offset heat gains, both of which would have been experienced by our hominid ancestors in Africa millions of years ago. 
It is even possible that curly hair might be one of the reasons why Homo sapiens supplanted the Neanderthal and Denisovan species of hominins, which died out about 40,000 years ago. I'm Ella Cici. I'm a third year graduate student at Penn State University, and I study the evolution of human hair variation. I look at human hair morphology and pigmentation, and essentially my question is, well, if you look at people all around the world, they have hair that is super varied. And my question is, how did we evolve that hair variation? Why do some people have really curly hair? Why do some people have straight hair? And all of these colors, did natural selection have anything to do with it? Tina Lasisi, a postdoctoral researcher in biological anthropology at Pennsylvania State University, thinks that genes for curly hair arose much earlier in human evolution, perhaps around two million years ago when Homo erectus was the dominant hominin. And as hominin brains grew, it suggested that genes for 4C curly hair that protected a scalp from the sun may have given those who had them an advantage. Now as for straight hair, Tina Lasisi says any genetic predisposition for curly hair among early hominins was probably variable and doesn't expect that it would have been homogeneous. At a later point of our evolution, curly hair may have lost its evolutionary advantage and straight hair may have been favored by different types of genetic selection. Once we had those larger brains, we also had all these cultural adaptations to avoid overheating, like better sources of water and cooler climates. And at that point, there wasn't such selective pressure for curly hair. The next stage of the research would be to look for genetic evidence in modern humans, such as which genes are associated with hair morphology. Then the second step would be to see if those are seen in archaic humans. We can understand human skin really quite simply. The skin pigmentation that we see so beautifully arrayed in a geographic pattern is not random. It evolved as the product of natural selection. 86% of variation in the skin color of indigenous peoples can be explained by variation in ultraviolet radiation. The work and research that has been done on skin color and how melanin protects us from solar radiation can shape some of the decisions that a person makes in terms of the amount of sunscreen needed in certain environments, similar to decision making can occur with hair. When you think about the military or different athletes exercising in diverse environments, the final research can help determine if certain hairstyles can make someone overheat more easily or which hairstyles would be optimally worn. Hey guys, we come to the end of the video. What do you think about the latest research on hair, specifically 4C curly hair and its evolutionary advantage? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Until then, we'll see you next time.